A 16-year-old alleged victim taking a stand in a rape trial making national headlines. But what the student told the nurse at her exclusive boarding school is now raising thorny questions in court. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. Bombshell testimony today in the trial of New Hampshire prep school grad Owen Labrie as his accuser described the moments leading up to what she said was rape. We're disguising her voice. He took your pants off, right? Yes, I did. Well, you helped him do that, didn't you? I lifted my hips up to make it easier for him, yes. Details that underscore how complicated these cases can be. Were you excited to have his attention? During the kissing, yes, I was. But certain, she says, at the moment of truth, that she wanted him to stop. I didn't kick or scream or really push, but I did say no. I said no three times. For the third day in a row, the 19-year-old young man sitting, listening to his 16-year-old accuser described what happened a year ago after he invited her to participate in the so-called senior salute, an alleged tradition at St. Paul's School where some graduating male students would invite younger girls to spend time alone with them, sometimes intimately. I thought it was pushy. I thought it was aggressive, sure, um, but because he was guiding me and putting me where he wanted me to be. But this time, it was Labrie's defense attorney, Jay Carney, asking the difficult questions. But did I read it correctly that when your pants were coming off, you were excited to have attention from him? That is true that I said that, yes, but that's in a different so, context. The lawyer confronting the girl over what she told detectives last year, days after the alleged rape. The girl said back then that she was cloudy. Well, why were you cloudy? I was raped. I was violated in so many ways. For observers in the courtroom, the cross-examination of a 16-year-old girl, sometimes hard to watch. The reality is that the defense attorney has to ask her some very specific, very sexually related questions about what happened. Many rape victims feel re-traumatized by the court process, re-traumatized by the questioning process. And very often, it's the only crime where a woman gets questioned about her credibility. Carney bringing up the seemingly cordial messages she exchanged with Labrie after the encounter. You're an angel, he writes her. You're quite an angel yourself, she responds. Carney asking sarcastically. You that when you responded, you're not too bad yourself, I will. You were not being truthful, correct? Correct. I was hiding behind a computer screen. It's very possible that she was in denial. She didn't want to accept what happened to her. And as part of the undoing process of, of recognizing that she was raped, she engages almost in a friendly back and forth to pretend it didn't happen. But it was the cross-examination of the school nurse, who the alleged victim visited two days after the encounter, that may have helped the defense's case. She told you there had been an encounter, correct? Correct. And you asked her specifically if it was consensual. I did. And she told you, yes, it was consensual. She did. The fact that she didn't tell the nurse that she felt that she'd been raped doesn't make or break the case. But it's not a helpful fact for the prosecution. But the 16-year-old accuser had her supporters. Inside the courtroom, her mother telling the jury about the tearful call she got from her daughter days later in the middle of the night. I was just trying to calm her down to understand what she was trying to tell me. She said something bad has happened. And outside the courtroom, the alleged victim's family showing support. The family and I stand behind my niece and speaking out as so few victims of sexual violence do. In a country where an estimated 68% of rape victims never even file a report and where the burden of proof is often so high, critics say it takes a lot to decide to bring charges. Some know the story all too well. He did something to me that I have to work on every day and that I'm probably going to have to work on for the rest of my life. Allison Huguette was raped by her childhood friend, University of Montana football player Bo Donaldson. I woke up to a lot of pain and a lot of pressure and the sound of somebody moaning and quickly realized it was Bo. And then I just shut my eyes and laid there 
And that wasn't, I don't even think, a decision I consciously made. And I waited until he was done. And he got up and he literally picked up a blanket and threw it on me and then pulled up his pants and walked away. Bo was convicted of raping Allison and is currently in prison. The key to the conviction, a secret audio taped confession. Allison coaxed out of Bo herself. It was such a state of shock. Nightline co-anchor Juju Chang asked how important that audio tape had been. If you didn't have two taped confessions, how difficult a case would yours have been, do you think? Very difficult. That would be my word against his. A situation some say the 16-year-old St. Paul's girl is facing now. But Allison Huguette says in spite of the audio tape and the criminal conviction of her attacker, the backlash against her was staggering. It's awful. People are awful. But this week, across the country, all eyes turn to the case that, for better or worse, has become a kind of laboratory test of what is consent. The spokesperson for the accuser speaking outside court today. She even asked you to deliver a message. Yeah, she wanted everyone to know that, you know, she's not just a victim, she's a survivor. And she wants everyone else out there who is a victim, who has had this experience, to know they can feel that way too. They can speak out, they can ask for justice, and they deserve it. The man she accuses of raping her is expected to testify next week. Are you innocent? For Nightline, I'm Gio Benitez in Concord, New Hampshire.